23rd February, 9.23am, the Old Bailey Defendants Enter Chamber. Sorry, my mouse, oh, my game was not, it was not focused on the game. Oh, that's a beautiful sight to see. Is he trying to pretend he's a cat again? Um, <laughs> he's trying to be a cat again. This is it then, Mr. Nahudo. Yes, it is time to put an end to this now. The miserable curse has been plaguing Mr. Natsume to everything. And in my own small way, I shall do everything I can to help you. I always appreciate your help, Mr. Sato. Stop worrying so exactly selfishly sidelined. Huh. Good morning to you, Mr. Natsume. Good morning, good morning, locum student Mr. Nahudo Esquire. Listen to you two chatting away happily as if the man main player of today's trial isn't here. Why would you do that? Why? Lord's oh here. We didn't mean to cause offense, Mr. Natsume. Thought perhaps that you had your eyes shut to t so tightly, you were meditating, finding inner calm. It seems wrong to disturb you. I was waiting! What's the matter, Mr. Tsutsume? You seem different somehow today. Why, naturally, that's because I've attained spiritual enlightenment. The path of literature, you see, is a journey to discover one's own death. Or such like. That's the sort of morning conversation I was hoping for. That's why I had my eyes shut. I missed the signs, I'm afraid. Somehow, you'll have to forgive me. You mustn't talk of your own path leading to death, your death, Mr. Natsume. That was just an example. Oh yes, there it is, intercom. You barely came to see me at all yesterday. I'm sure you'd abandon me and return to our beautiful long lost homeland. We've not even been in Great Britain a week yet. Yes, well, anyway, I intend to set everything straight in court today. I'm determined to uncover the truth. I've actually reached an important decision myself. Oh, what sort of decision? So will you in after the trial? All right. It seem Mr. Sholmes isn't coming today after all. It's a very clever message, I think. My dear fellows, you must win the battle to on your own merits. It's a very clear message, I think, that he's overslept again. Great detective, my arch nemesis. Long may he stay away, if you ask me. Def Defendant, your legal representative. The trial is about to begin. Make your way into the courtroom immediately. Hey, that was nice that that part didn't take as long as it usually would. Today, once again, we face the Reaper. And when the Reaper stands for the prosecution, the defendant's fate is sealed. But I don't believe in that legend any more than I believe in Sasaki's uh, curse. The truth is hidden somewhere, and I won't let it escape me. I have to keep believing in my client and keep fighting to the very end. That's all. Twenty third February, nine forty a.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. Ah, we got the same jurors. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. Yes, the defense is ready. Very good, and now I call upon the six ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You have chosen by lot of represent the will of the people in this trial. Are you ready to proceed? Absolutely. Justice will be done, you mark my words. I feel obliged to say I feel especially ruthless on days when my hat is ju sitting just right. Oh, well, I wonder if you could just uh, adjust my hat for me, oh, and please be as ruthless as you like. Thieves deserve, thieves deserve to die, if you ask me, especially gas thieves. I have no sympathy for that man at all. Look, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again now. I don't have time for this. I've got my own problems. Oh my, the main lord show us all the light here and lead his flock to the righteous verdict again. Now, Lord Ranzix, what can you tell us? 
prosecution will put pleas for the courts. In relation to the theory expounded by the defense yesterday regarding the defendant's team. So he does have the results. Or the prosecution delivers the black news about the black tea belonging to the black guard in the, in the docks. Pray allow me a moment to savor a liquid of a more sanguine hue. In fact, I'll defer to the good detective for the report. Here to see you, Inspector. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. As indicated by the defense, we found a bar of soap just outside the victim's window in the snow. And there was indeed the frozen reddish liquid in a little depression on the top of it. Yes, that's the tea. That's what Mr. Natsume brought with him that night. Well, the brains of the yard analyze it, and yes, you're right, it was tea. And there wasn't a trace of styrene or any other toxic substance in it. No poison at all. In other words, that tea that the defendant brought with him to the victim's room is innocent. It's, it's in the clear. What a revelation! As I suspected. This makes it quite clear. The defendant, Mr. Sasaki Natsume, is blameless. My learned friend is jumping to conclusions again. A typical Nibbanese reaction. What? Yes, it's true. No poison was found in the few drops of liquid recovered from the soap on the window ledge. But what logic is that? Would you take a drop from the Thames and conclude that the water in the ocean isn't salty? My word, the water in the ocean is extremely salty, Council. Exactly. Unfit for drinking, just as the victim's tea was on the night in question. As the court had has already heard. Bitter was the precise word from the lips of Mrs. William Shamspear. Whom the prosecution now calls back to the stand. Oh great. They're gonna say a drop of poison's not enough. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's request. Mrs. Shamspear? Yes, it sounds like we're going to have another confrontation with our theatrical friend. Hey, let him show Mr. Shamsmere to the sand. <laughs> Mr. William Shamsmere, the victim of this despicable crime. Oh heavens, oh hell, do you command me to remember? Forsooth, twas I, Shamsmere, did have a belly full of the foul fluid given in my innocence. Yes, but it was revealed in yesterday's proceedings. The witnesses is not as innocent as we ha had perhaps first been led to believe. By using barbed soap such as this, he has been stealing gas from the supply company, yes. One may smile and smile and be a villain. Forsooth, t'was I, Shamspear, did have a room full of the sweet fuel given. That's right, fellow jurors, don't forget this man is a rotten thief. I haven't forgotten. Keep kept it all kept all that about the ice coins a tidy secret, didn't I? Didn't you? You should have owned up sooner. Arrest him, I say. Arrest him at once and let him feel the sting in my tail. Ah, oh, so she is like a bee. Oh, indeed, by dint of vile and cowardly means, have I plotted to further mine own ends? I confess, thou wouldst not pardon my sins of that. I am sure. If you acknowledge your own wrongdoings, what exactly are you doing here? Cowards die many times before their deaths. And for a coward such as I, death will be well deserved. But would it be a still greater crime passeth unpunished? For lo, the hairy faced gentleman of Father East than Verana did contrive to poison me. Objection. But there was no poison in the tea found in your room. The police have attested to that. The defense would assert was as an inconsistency will quickly be cleared up by the witness testimony. Is that not so, Mr. Shamspear? Barely in my liege, I will most gladly speak. 
Very well, let the witnesses survive to explain this inconsistency. Tell the court why it is that the poison apparently ends in your body, though none was found in the tea. Alright, the tea inconsistency. The Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea, brewed in a pot. While I was in my cup alone, that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Whilst feigning distraction in our debate, neither did a drop of his own of his drink own pass his own lips. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coin of ice. Thus, tis no surprise that poison be not found, and the tea I did pour into the moles of soap. Poison was slipped into the cup after the tea had been poured. The normal way for poison to be administered in my experience. Or, otherwise, it would be disastrous if the poisoner were to mix up the cups, for instance. But no poison bottle was found at the scene. Because, quite simply, the Nibionese took the bottle back to his own room. The absence of a vessel containing the poison only pro becomes problematic when considering suicide. Ugh, I knew that. By now it should be perfectly clear. A barbed O2 of cheap soap is who wholly insufficient to wash the deep stains of guilt from the accused hands. Ugh. Sirs, madams, tis true that I, Shamsbeer, be a common thief of gas. But, but listen here, ladies and gentlemen. Before would I lie, verily have no cause, I have not to lose. Well, I do declare. Thank you for your testimony, witness. Counsel, proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Okay, well then, let's proceed with this again. <laughs> the Japanese man to come to my chamber with tea brewed in a pot. Oops, not present. That's not what I want. Uh, press. Hold it! I understand that you were already acquainted with Mr. Natsume. Is that correct? I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Do I know thee or know thee not? Methinks tis all I can know that thy destiny mingles with mine. You lost me at the first thee. Sounds, sir, thou must learn English tongue afore thou turns thy hand to Lorien. I did, but it must have missed the archaic Elizabethan lecture. Barely in truth, twas a fine flavored brew, though a drop of poison did barb its sweetness, as a thorn soft barb the sweet rose. Let dear friends be the simp tru simple truth. Listen to, listen to Mr. Shamsbury. He speaks in heaven's better form than he was yesterday. After that, oh, I'm in worse form. That faded evening after I did dine. At Grubb's Grubbery, a local alehouse of good reports. Not did pass my lips, but the tainted black tea. But behold, the poison was not in the tea at first. in my cup alone that the wicked Miss Scream secretly poured his wicked poison. Hold it! Are you saying that you saw the moment when the poison was added to your tea? To have witnessed the act and then drank the tea? Thou dost describe the actions of a fool. Quite so, quite so. But no one like going thirsty, do they? Sooner would I die quenched than parched. Would I have the choice? Actually, on the night in question, the water main was frozen, I believe, wasn't it? <laughs> Were it not for the tea in sooth, I would have sooner died frozen than quenched or parched. Right, no ice coins means no heating. The witness had more than one brush with the death on the night in question, it would seem. Remind the court, Mr. Shamspear, as to whether the accused drank any of the tea which he, he brought with him. 
With the greatest of pleasures, my leech. Whilst feigning distraction in our debate, near did a drop of his own drink did pass his lips. Hold it! But the teacup is an assuming drink was found completely empty at the scene. As l and let's not forget that the defendant Maxim drink tea while it's hot. I did gulp from the poison cup that night, and in my agony did I writhe uncontrolled. In fits of pain, I did knock the fellow's cup and its contents spilt as blood from a gaping wound, methinks. Though certainly, twas after I made the coins of ice from his tea. An upset, an upset cup was found on the table that the victim was slumped over. There was no contradiction here. It's true, there was no tea left in either cup that we found at the scene. But still, something about this statement is troubling me. Yes, of course, I know what it is. It's Mr. Dasume's wise drink tea while it's hot maxim, isn't it? No, I'm sure that's it. That's not it. That's it. I, don't, I forgot what she said. Thank you, witness. I will reiterate to the court what it is that occupied you after the guests had left and before you drank your tea. When he departed by and by, I did use the tea that remained in his cup to make my coins of ice. Hold it! Yes, so you, you could cheat the gas company. In fact, isn't that right? To cheat or to die. His life's only choice. Yes. Faith to cheat to be wise choice, and mine occupation be not an ugly one. Pray thee, dost thou not see beauty in the in the simplicity of the ruse? No, I do. I know I don't, and very sure, sir. Once this trial is over, how much gas will take you to over take over this legal task? I shall not run, I shall not hide. Sooth to say, I have nowhere to run nor to hide. But my lady, wilt, wilt thou with this pity play? Well, oh, I'll tell you what I'd like to do with you, starting with the shoddy shirt on your back. Tis time for chance for to dance. What a harsh world we live in. The thieving of gas was addressed in yesterday's proceeding. The prosecution calls on the defense not to muddle the waters with irrelevancy. Consider that a warning, counsel. Yes, my lord. Why am I the one in trouble here? Mr. Zamspur, after the accused returned to his own lodgings, you used his tea to make your own coins. Is that correct? To cheat or to die, I did make my choice many moons ago. Tis not surprised that the poison be not found in the tea. I did pour it into molds Hold of it. soap. If having first made your special coins, it was after two in the morning when you collapsed. That would mean you can't have drunk any tea yourself around that time. Once it's here, we literally debate. None else had been found in the furors of the mind. The debate that about Romeo and Juliet, you mean? And who was the stronger of the two? Rightly did I pay no heed to the tea as I wrestled with the abominable fellow. I don't remember debates like that when I was studying. Are you suggesting that neither of you actually drank the tea whilst it was hot that evening? My lord, wouldst thou be privy to some Shakespearean wisdom? Husband, wife, and tea are A to Pid B. Ah, yes, so very true. Everyone has a different preference when it comes to tea. I think you might have interpreted that wrongly. Hmm. So it's been proven that there was no sign, uh, no poison in Soseki's tea. That should be hugely in our favor. But the atmosphere in this courtroom today... It feels as though everybody is against us, Mr. Naruto. It must be the Reaper's poison. I'm afraid that if we don't find a significant flaw in his testimony somewhere... The jury will pronounce and find Mesunatsume guilty. It really feels like we've jumped into the fire here. Let's see, the Japanese man did come to my chamber with tea brewed and pot. Was in my cup alone that the wicked miscreant secretly poured his wicked poison. Uh, let me check my records of stuff. Hmm. 
I mean, this one has no stains of tea, so that means it was did not stay in the cup long. Let's see what else is there. Whilst feigning distraction out of debate, Nier did a drop of his own drink past his lips. Uh, I don't know. Something feels odd about that. Let us try presenting the teacup. See what happens. Objection! Because I'm pretty sure the tea stain line claims otherwise. You claim that Mr. Natsume didn't drink a drop of tea in the night in question. But that's impossible. How? How? Chop logic. What is this, ye dark ye clad fellow? The two cups from the scene, one used by the victim and the other used by the defendant. Have a clear difference between them. One that represents incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible? What difference? Look at the inside of the cups here. There's a clearly visible ring. Yes, a tea ring commonplace enough. Why does he have to look at a scroll to fact check that? <laughs> Indeed, such stains occur all too readily when one leaves it in tea in the cup for a while. And yet, Mr. Natsume's cup has no ring. Good lord, you're right! It can't- it's completely clean! And pray thee, sir, what makes thou of it? Exactly what Mr. Natsume told the court yesterday. The Japanese saying he quoted... Drink... Tea? While it's hot! That's right, yes. The jittery Mr. Natsume was true to his usual self that night and drank his tea in no time. Huh. If you, if as you claim in the testimony he didn't touch a drop of his tea, a ring would have developed on the inside of his cup as well. After several hours, the tea was left standing. But, but, um... In short, Mr. Shamspear, you clearly lied to the court. Get, get the... Do a nunnery! I think that's what he said. Objection! As a rule, I fill my hollow chalice up to seven times during one trial. Any one trial. Does he drink at all? <laughs> you might want to keep that information to yourself. Yet, occasion tedium distracts me, and I pour more times than I intend until the bottle is dry. Your drinking habits are fascinating but irrelevant, and to have so much of that looks like very expensive wine. On the contrary, they illustrate the fickleness of human memory. William Shakespeare. Y yes, my liege. Though you previously stated that you made the coins vice from the leftover tea in the accused cup, could it be that you were perhaps mistaken? Huh? Could it be that, yes, perhaps there was some tea remaining in the small teapot left at the scene? There was a teapot? A fact that has vanished from your memory until now. Is there a teapot? Faith, my liege, thou art a magician. For verily, tis as though thou hast seen with thine own eyes that night. What? Forsooth, I mistook. I did plan to use tea from the Japanese fellow's cup. But lo, when I looked, it was empty. And thus did I use the dreads that festered in the teapot, as my liege did suggest. I don't remember a teapot at all. And you've just suddenly remember now that you had mistaken that before. Oh, I see. There's like a kettle over here. <laughs> Are we supposed to believe that? Objection! People's memories are imperfect, my learned friend. Which is why we rely on evidence instead. But in any case, it makes no difference. Victim's most recent testimony tells us two things of note. Firstly, the poison was put in the victim's teacup only. And secondly, that this spoilt cup was not the source of the insipid ice coins that this bewitched the court. Um, the prosecutor makes a fine summary of the facts. Furthermore, the testimony remains valid and in full support of the established facts. In other words...
The inconsistencies claimed by the fence simply does not exist. No. What does it mean then? I do declare, it means that there's no issue with the gas thief's testimony. Apart from that bit of the thieving gas, obviously. My lords and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I do solemnly swear, after I did die in a grub scrubbery ale house that night, not did pass my lips, but the black tea given me by the Japanese, whose back be stooped as low as death. Alright, we're gonna stop this part here, so, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and until then, I will see you all later. Goodbye.